um, new to the marketplace. We're doing the clinical trials at the moment. And um, I suppose there have been similar type devices, which is a mixed RF uh, microneedling uh, method to induce um, new collagen. But this actually runs at a slightly higher platform. Some of the devices have been running one to five. This runs up to 10. Probably the lower levels, one, two, and three, could be used by more junior levels of staff, your senior nurses, probably four and five, and above that, probably a doctor. As you know, microneedling has been around quite a long time. Um, started probably related to this Swiss French dermatologist, and um, we have to take into account um, many other people. Um, Des Fernandez, certainly in Cape Town, was doing it, I remember, in the 90s. I was doing it myself in Australia a little bit. We were using different type of devices, uh, more, more like rubber stamps at the time. And um, this, I suppose, has changed over the years, particularly with devices like um, dermapens, motorized needles, and they have benefits and I suppose faults like everything else. If you want to chop up the skin, the little wheels still, I suppose, have an, to an extent. If you want to chase individual scars, atrophic acne scars, it's obviously ice pick isn't the best, or even varicella scars, then these motorized pens are quite efficient. If you're going to get one, obviously get one that can be cleansed. There has been instances of people being sued for HIV. Now, what's different about Onyx to an extent is that it uses different RF frequencies. So a bit like radio surgery, using your coag and your cutting heads and all the rest, the machine itself, I'll go into it later, gives different patterns um, in 0.5 megahertz, 1 megahertz, and 2. It's got a dwell time of quite a long time, seven seconds and its penetration runs from 0.5 to 6 millimeters. So if we're doing cheeks, we're probably still around 2.5 to 3, forehead probably 1.5, and you know yourself, we're moving into tightening jawlines and using it for different parameters. It's got a TEC cooling plate, the only system to have that, and it's got additional LED functions with it as well. Now, it's got a very intuitive screen. You can see that there's four parameters on it. Um, the top left one is the strength of the RF, runs between one and 10. Then the um, depth of the needle, um, probably running a little high there at four. Most of them would run at um, 2.5. The level itself, um, it can be changed all the way up to 10 and the RF time is a bit like dwell time on a laser. You can change the parameter there. This is the um, handpiece. It's got non-insulated gold coated um, electrodes and it's got a hand switch, a foot switch and an automatic um, level as well. So you can set the parameters, particularly the depth of the needle and all the other four system parameters on the intuitive screen itself. You can see the advantages of gold colored coated needles in terms of they don't tend to erode and um, it has a low um, possibility of causing allergic type problems. Skin is compatible with it. This is just some histology of insulated, non-insulated micro needles and you can see the zone of thermal necrosis is changed between them and it is certainly more direct and efficient with the Onyx insulated needle. This tech cooling plate um, has been patented for this machine also. It can come off quite easily and go into your autoclave. And um, it's activated by thermal electric peelter. And peelter devices, actually they were invented down the road here in the 1890s, um, Peter was a Parisian um, scientist, and it, it really is if you have two different metals um, and you pass an electric current through them, you'll get a heating effect on one side and the other that you can reverse also. If you actually heat them up, you can get electric current the other way around. That's called the ceiling effect. And um, this is used as a consistent means of cooling. This is what I mentioned earlier, 
that if you use the different three RF modes, if you use not 0.5, which is the lowest, it's wide and deep, as you can see from this, all the way up to two, which is narrow and more concentrated. It also uses a special circuit board called a Chevron circuit board to give better RF emission flow and effective treatments. It's up and running already and with see marks for active scarring. A lot of the trials have been done in the East, particularly Korea, and um, we are presently putting it underway for jawline and neck tightening with some effect. It seems to be also that it can be used for hyperhidrosis. I haven't used it for that means or method just as yet, but that does seem to be a very interesting um, aspect to it, particularly auxiliary hyperhidrosis. These are the contraindications, people with tumors, people who are pregnant, people with severe cardiovascular or cerebral vascular disease, people with pacemakers or defibs on board, like most RF devices. This is up to the doctor if they want to sort of, these aren't um, contraindications, but there's something to be aware of. People who are on blood thinner medicine, people who have a history of keloid scarring, I don't think I would be treating somebody with that. Um, obviously, again, haemophilia, eczema, people who are suffering from just straightforward dermatological diseases like rosacea, maybe people who have got tattoos. And um, you can get these little marks afterwards. It's almost like a scab type effect that lasts for two or three days. And um, you can get this sort of track mark down below, that histamine reaction lasting for a few days as well. But most people would be possibly red overnight, and that would be it. You'll get a little bit of bleeding, the same as you would with um, microneedling. It's a bit less, obviously, because there's a coagulation effect from the RF itself. You'll get some erythema that can last for some hours or maybe overnight. The patients themselves could get um, a reaction where they feel a bit of pain, so you have to watch it as you go along. You use the local anesthetic. Um, for hands, face, and neck, and the sensation has been likened mostly to a uh, skin burn, or sorry, just like sunburn. Um, some people, as you say, get these histamine responses, and um, I think we're almost ready to run. Rory, are you ready to? Now, the different levels that we can do are, as I said, depth, pulse duration, and frequency can be set and um, the RF levels. Have we got a connection with the live demo? It's just Can if I keep talking, then I'll be able to do the live demo. Yeah, he started. I cannot hear you, Dale. So that patient would have a local anesthetic on beforehand. Um, I myself tend to use stronger anesthetics almost, I think they're just using Emily here, which is 5%. I tend to use um, 20 to 25 because I tend to use those in laser resurfacing anyway. Or we make up our own BLT or, or lipophilic lidocaine. You can also do multiple passes, so this would be a first pass. Uh, can you hear me, Rory? What sort of settings are you using at the moment? We can't hear anything. Maybe, oh, you can see the machine, okay. Right, okay, so it's level three, and um, the delay, 0.5, depth is 2. So these are fairly moderate settings, and I suppose for a live demonstration, we don't want anything to go wrong, that's fine. Usually we leave a period of about a month or, or 40 days between each treatment, and um, I suppose different clinics charge different things. We charge about 400 euros a treatment, and um, particularly I want to um, see the effects of the study on necks and jawline.
little bit amazed, uh, Patrick, that you are not using uh, insulated needles. It seems to me like being a little bit old-fashioned. Um, those needles are insulated. Oh, those needles are insulated? I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought mm -hmm. you said. So the only effect will be deep down yes. on, on the Backlift. tip? I think, actually, I have it on the thing, but the area, there's just a little tip at the bottom that's exposed. Yeah. Which is the reason, I suppose, in that histology slide, you could just see the thermal necrosis in the dermis itself. Also use it to uh, um, get some drugs in or cosmeceuticals? Not as yet, but I know that we have discussed that in the past, not you and I particularly, but uh, at some of the meetings in terms of transdermal. Um, I do it all the time with ordinary microneedling. Um, I suppose I'd be almost afraid to do it in this in case it damaged the heads. Um, the heads are obviously changed between every patient, but uh, particularly a lot of the hyaluronic acid serums, I don't know whether if it got back up it would block maybe the little motor or something. And when the device belongs to somebody else, you're always on the <laughs> side of caution. Any darker skin? Have you used it on it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's no problems? No, it's blind. And you can also use it for hyperpigmentation, the same as you can with microneedling to an extent. Its use in auxiliary hyperhidrosis is going to be of interest, you know. And um, the fact that other devices like mirror dry can't be used in the hand per se, um, it'll be interesting to see whether if it is effective because it is a less invasive, I suppose, method. Immediate post-care? Yes, um, we um, have a type of moisturizer we give the patient afterwards that the and we have a post-treatment sheet. There are any questions from the audience? Do do put them across for each device as we go along, please. That little black thing you can see at the side is the cooling tip, and um, it comes off after each patient and gets sterilized. And you can see the machine now is at level three, isn't it? And the patient still isn't um, feeling particularly too much pain. In fact, she looks like she's asleep. It's quite comfortable. <laughs> yes.